Father, we thank you. Thank you again for another wonderful week. Oh, we give you praise for this day. We are getting now towards the end of June, June 26th, 2022. Thank you for the launch of PBC two weeks ago. Thank you for last week's Sunday. Thank you for revealing the love of you as a father to us. We are grateful for that which you're about to do even now. Thank you, Lord, for your worship. Father, may your name be praised. Oh, the Lord bless you greatly, Minister Femi Okunaga. Thank you for leading us into that awesome, spirit-filled session of worship. Father, we thank you. Precious Lord, please grant unto me the door of utterance that I will speak the very words that are in your heart, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Precious people, I am excited because we are about to begin a journey together. You know, last week's Sunday was awesome, and I was really blessed. I thank God for his love, and I thank God for all that he is doing. Today, we're going to be beginning a series. This is going to be a series that will last for about two months. And the series is on the prevailing life. The prevailing life. This is part one. This is series one. Series one. Uh, the prevailing life. It's going to be about, I don't know, eight to ten weeks. It all depends on how the Spirit of God guides us. All right. So without further ado, let us go into it. Uh, the anchor text of scripture is Matthew chapter number 16 from verse 13 to 20. I'm really excited about bringing the word of the Lord, you know, to you all again, you know, in this medium and through this online space, you know, that this is PBC as a borderless church simply means that it is streaming across uh, the globe. That is one of the fastest ways to be borderless, the online platform. And we thank God for helping us to take this mountain called the online space, the metaverse, and to introduce content that is godly to the glory of his name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 to 20, KJV, KJV, Matthew 16, 13 to 20. I'm going to read this text of scripture for you and then we're going to hone into the focal point for today. Part one. So for those of you who take notes, which I hope most of you do, again, the title of this sermon, which is really part one of a series that will probably last about two months, is The Prevailing Life. Again, Matthew chapter number 16 from verse 13 to 20, KJV. By the way, this will be our anchor text throughout the series. It is out of this that we trust the Holy Spirit to bring out his messages and his juice and give us the word of life in the name of Jesus with expansive dimensions. I would read Matthew 16, 13 to 20 KJV. The word of the Lord goes thus. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elias. And, and, and others say you are, you know, Jeremiah, which is Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Verse 15. He saith unto them, But, Oh God, But, Whom say ye that I, um, loaded question. And there was silence. But then verse 16, something happens. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. Last week, we talked about this father. Today, we're seeing him again showing up. But my father, which is in heaven. Verse 18, I continue. 
And I, Jesus, say unto thee, Peter, that thou art Peter. Hold on a second. What happened to Simon? Just a second ago, he was Simon. That's a different story for another day. That's part of the series. It's part of the series of a prevailing life. Let's continue. I say unto thee, thou art Peter, Petra in the Greek, Petros. And upon this rock, I will build my church, PBC, RCCG, the body of Christ globally. And the gates, plural, of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys, plural, plural, of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 20, then charged he, Jesus, to his disciples that they should not tell any man that he was Jesus uh, the Christ. What an amazing text of scripture. This Matthew 16 is, is, is fundamental to everything that we've come to know as the church. Because the church of Christ was built upon a revelational rock about the person of Jesus the Christ. Peter did not answer and say, Thou art Jesus, son of Mary. He did not say, Thou art Jesus, son of Joseph. He did not say, Thou art Jesus, son of David, like Bartimaeus did. He did not say, Thou art Jesus, son of Abraham. All of those answers will have been correct by logic. But look at what he did. He said, Thou art the Christ. Christos in the Greek and then Messiah in the Hebrew, both of which mean the anointed one. The anointed one. What does it really mean to prevail? By way of this revelation, let's look at what the dictionary says. Just a few definitions of prevail, the word to prevail. To prevail means to prove more powerful than opposing forces. Number one. Number two, to gain ascendancy through strength or superiority. Mm. Number three, to gain the advantage or mastery over a thing or a person or a situation. Prevail. Number four, to triumph or be victorious. Number five, to become effective or effectual. Like I mentioned earlier, Acts 19.20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed and became effectual and it became effective so those are the definitions of the word prevail it's from a root word in latin if you really want to go into the etymology pre valeris pre valeris which means to have conquest and superiority and dominance over a particular force to prove more powerful in the very sense of the word okay prevail amazing the prevailing game point number one in this series is a zero-sum game <laughs> yes the prevailing game is a zero-sum game you are either prevailing against something a force or that thing or that force is prevailing against you in the prevailing game there are no 50 shades of gray <laughs> there are no 50 shades of gray a lot of you have been spending too much of time watching hollywood movies so you actually believe that there are 50 shades of gray no in the prevailing game it's a zero-sum game it's either this it's binary hallelujah glory to god so then which side do you want to be on do you want to be on the side that is being prevailed against or do you want to be on the side that prevails against i want to be on the side that prevails against the good news though is this jesus the christ for as long as you're part of his family and we're going to give an opportunity for those who are not yet part of the family of Jesus in a little bit to join the family. Jesus guaranteed us with an assurance. In Matthew 16, 18, he says, I, Jesus the Christ, will build my church, my body, my wife, my bride, y'all, if you are part of the body of Christ, and the gates of hell shall not. That is a definitive guarantee. It's not may not or could not or perhaps not. No shall not 
prevail against you and I. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Now, when you go through that text of scripture we just went through, Matthew 16, all the way from verse 13 to 20, 13 to 20, that will be our coverage by the help of God's spirit for the next two months because there is so much there. In fact, you could, you could actually spend a whole year studying the prevailing life. These are the things that the Spirit of God, by His grace, has been revealing unto me privately in the privacy of my closet. The prevailing life, is, this is, these are the mysteries of the kingdom. It's an incredible secret of godliness. Yes, absolutely. So, there are multiple dimensions on how to prevail. Let's go through them. And today we're going to start with the first one, as series one. Okay? The steps to leading a prevailing life, from the text we just read, Matthew 16, 13 to 20. There are about seven steps. About seven steps that I was able to glean through the help of God's Spirit out of that. Step number one. Acceptance and confession of the Lordship of Christ. Acceptance and confession of the Lordship of Christ. And the proof of that is in Matthew 16 and verse 16. Where Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Acceptance, confession. Son of the living God. Confession of the Lordship and the very identity of Christ. He said it with his mouth. He had to say it. Confession and acceptance of the Lordship of Jesus Christ is step number one. Matthew 16, 16, 16. Everyone has to eventually confess it. Romans chapter 10, 9 to 10. Romans 10, 9 to 10. He says, for with the heart man believes... And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Oh yes, eventually everybody has to stand before their maker and pronounce this confession. That is what leads to salvation. Psalms 91, from verse 1 to 2, very common scripture. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, continue with me, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I love this. And I will say, you gotta say it. You, you gotta say it, y'all. You gotta say it of the Lord. He is my refuge. There has to be a confession. It's step number one to living and leading a prevailing life. Step number two is to be blessed by God. And that is Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17, the very next verse. It says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. We're gonna spend almost three Sundays on just that step two. Blessed art thou. Starting from next week, Sunday, by the grace of God, we're going to focus on what does it mean to be blessed of God? It's so loaded. Blessed art thou, Simon Majuna. That's step number two on this series. Step number three, get a name change. I mentioned to you earlier when we were reading <laughs> that he went from Simon Bajona to Petros. Simon, by the way, means an unstable element. Petros means rock, Petra, Greek, rock, Peter, stability, concrete foundational elements. A name change is critical for anyone that will lead a prevailing life. And that is in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, A, the A part. Step number four, walk in the revelation of what you've received from God and be built by it. Matthew 16, 18b. Matthew 16, 18b. Step number five, to leading a prevailing life. <laughs> Receive the keys of the kingdom. Oh boy. This again, is, <laughs> this is going to probably take us about three weeks to go through. Because it is too much to cover on one Sunday. The keys to the kingdom. Oh, the spirit of God is going to help us to begin to unpack these things. And you can see that in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19a. Matthew 16, 19a. Step number six to leading a prevailing life. Bind. Matthew 16, 19b. And step number seven to leading a prevailing life. Loose. Matthew 16 and verse 19c. Over the next two months, by the grace of God, we're going to go through each of these in finer detail by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to focus you very quickly on uh, the first piece, which is accepting and confessing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, this is going to be a very short sermon. 
We've laid the ground. God has shown us the steps. You are asking yourself, I want to live a prevailing life. Everywhere else I've gone to, I have been defeated. Everywhere I turn to in academics, in business, in investments, in career, in college, in university, in relationships, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my marriage, my husband, everywhere I turn to, I seem to be losing this game of life. Enough of that, Lord. I want to win. Can you help me win? The Lord says, I want to help you win. But you have to do one important thing, though. You got to come into my family. He is a father of not all. He is God of all, but he's not a father of all. Because fatherhood denotes family. Family, family, until you have received the Lord, you cannot claim God as your father. You can be, he can be your God, but he may not be your father. And God is calling you to the place again of father to child, father to child. For as many as received him, John chapter 1 and verse 12, to them he gave them power to become the sons of God. It's not everybody. You got to first receive Jesus, John 1, 12. For as many as received him, you must first receive Jesus, confess that he is Lord and that he really died for you and that he did what he did. Let's stop living in denial. Everybody's living in denial because there is an alternative universe. We live in a world of relativity. Hey, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Jesus is the constant. He is my life. There is no me without him. I'm telling you, all these years that I've been doing banking on Wall Street, he has been my anchor, distinguishing me everywhere I've gone. He is the one who favors me. I'm telling you, there are things I have done in the school, in, 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 on the job that I never learned in the MBA program. Why? Because Jesus is my partner. He's not a myth that I read in the Bible. He is reality. In the same way I'm looking at you, if you want to start winning, aka prevailing, I invite you today to say this prayer with me. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and that I have not admitted you as my Lord. I have not accepted you as my Lord. I have done life by my own way. It hasn't really quite worked out for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you paid the price. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. Please come into my heart. Teach me how to live. Help me as my personal Lord and as my personal Savior. I want to begin a new chapter of my life with you. Even as we are starting this series today, I join the body of Christ globally and I join this church in PBC to say, I surrender to you. Help me to begin to prevail. Teach me how to win. Teach my hands to war. Blessed be you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Again, if you said that prayer, congratulations. This is why we are here. This is why the Lord has set up PBC. This is the reason why PBC exists. To herald the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the online medium so that it might cut through borders with prevailing power and draw men to the one worthy of mastery and study. His name is Jesus Christ. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.